Coming up at 11, tips to keep your Christmas packages safe. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. This year's Cyber Monday was expected to be the biggest online shopping day in U.S. history. That means many packages will be left on doorsteps across eastern Kentucky in the coming days and weeks. WYMT's Keaton Hall has more on how to keep those items safe this holiday. Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday. A busy weekend for shoppers means an increase in package deliveries and an increase in thefts. We do see an increase in the thefts this time of year because people are going Christmas shopping and, and they're going to have more items. To keep your packages safe, Deputy Gilbert Achardo recommends you purchase a security camera. And you can have it tied to a little inexpensive video camera that's motion detected that will pick up uh, somebody coming up into your front yard and, and taking things that don't belong to them. Officials also recommend you check for your deliveries often and don't let packages sit out overnight. You can actually request a, a time for them to deliver items to your house so that way you'll make sure that you're going to be there. The Postal Service lets you track your packages using their informed delivery feature. You can also request they hold your packages if you won't be home. You can track or modify your UPS delivery with UPS My Choice and with FedEx, their FedEx delivery manager. The Laurel County Sheriff's Department also offers an away from home service on their Laurel SO app. Give us the address to your to your residence and we'll we'll have deputies patrol that area frequently while you're on vacation. That way you can have some peace of mind. You can also have your packages delivered to a neighbor or family member if you won't be home. In London, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. Earlier this year, House Bill 23 made porch piracy a felony in Kentucky, punishable by one to five years in prison. Well, quiet weather continues across the mountains tonight, but we are tracking a few changes, especially into your Tuesday and also into your Wednesday. Here is a live look over at the London Corbin Airport, looking at a partly cloudy sky back in the distance. Current temperature at 38 degrees over at the airport, and we are also quiet over in Rowan County at I-64 in Moorhead. Current temperature... 45 degrees over in Moorhead right now. High temperatures on your Monday, upper 40s, lower 50s, 50 for London, 48 in Jackson, and 49 over in Pikeville. But temperatures tonight, they are falling into the upper 30s and lower 40s, 42 in Pikeville, and 38 right now over in Manchester. You can see on satellite and radar, clouds are starting to fade away tonight, and those will continue to fade away as we go overnight tonight. We stay quiet under a partly cloudy sky, maybe a few areas of patchy fog as well. Temperatures falling into the middle 30s, but some big changes on the way. That full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. Tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. This annual event encourages generosity the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. In honor of the day, country music artist T. Graham Brown is encouraging folks to give back to Eastern Kentucky. Brown created a Come Hell or High Water t-shirt following the historic flooding in July. The shirts are $25 and all proceeds go towards flood relief. The Knott County Central High School basketball floor was flooded four months ago today. Now, after lots of hard work, the Patriots have a new court to play on. The new floor still has the big K that has been a symbol of success for so many years at Knott Central. Assistant Principal Jamie Couch says they still have plans for the K that was on the flooded court. And we're going to try to put that up on the wall here in the gym somewhere. And, you know, at least we will always have a piece of that with us. And, and former players and coaches uh, will, be, uh, will feel good about that and, you know, be able to uh, see that when they walk in. Not Central plays their first game on the new floor on December 13th. FEMA has approved more than $2 million in FEMA buyouts. As of now, 13 properties in Perry County have been approved. And Perry County Judge Executive Scott Alexander says this is just the first phase, saying nearly 60 people have applied for the FEMA buyout program. 
Once the people sign up, uh, then it starts through the process of FEMA. Once approved, then we have to go back and do the paperwork and make sure that the family still wants their home to be bought out. Now, once the property is bought out, it can never be used again. It becomes a green space. Alexander says they hope this helps prevent future flooding for the people with homes being bought out. He says if you would still like to apply for the FEMA buyout program, you can do so at one of the multi-agency resource centers. Many flood survivors say they are still having trouble finding the help they so desperately need. Four months later, they're still waiting on assistance from groups like FEMA. Jeremy Toms has more. Like many others in eastern Kentucky, Chastity Mullins was fast asleep in her Jenkins home as the water swiftly rose in late July. She still can't believe what she saw when one of her sons eventually woke her. I will never forget it because it looked like we were sitting in the middle of a muddy, raging river. A mother of four, Mullins and her boyfriend rounded up the kids and gathered all they could before getting to safety, but they lost everything they left behind. To rub salt in fresh wounds, her boyfriend was made to resign from his job. With no way of supporting themselves, they tried seeking aid from both FEMA and the Red Cross. But Mullins is having trouble proving ownership of her home to FEMA as it's under her grandmother's name. A lot of the homes around eastern Kentucky are passed down through airship or you know, bought on a land sales contract that may not have been recorded with the county clerk. So several months and several denials later, Mullins is left with little more than feelings of frustration. On top of having to deal with all this heartache and devastation and loss, you know, we're out here trying to dig up paperwork. Four months later, I'm telling you right now, they ain't helped me do squat. But Apple Red attorney Whitney Bailey is giving Mullins hope that the situation is not a complete loss, and they're going to keep fighting for what she deserves. They need answers now. They need help now. But it's out of anybody's control. Just don't give up. Keep pushing through. But also reach out and let us help shoulder that burden. Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Bailey says they are exploring options even for those who have not inquired about aid yet. So for anyone who still needs help, you can call Apple Red at their Legal Aid Flood Intake Hotline. Wayne County Sheriff's deputies arrested 55-year-old James Cowan in Monticello Friday after they say he failed to stop at a stop sign and began weaving in and out of traffic. Deputies say while they pursued the car, Cowan began throwing something out of a window. Police say they recovered the item and discovered it was a plastic bag with meth residue inside. Cowan is facing several charges, including, including fleeing or evading police and tampering with physical evidence. Former Kentucky Governor John Y. Brown Jr. will lie in state tomorrow at the Capitol Rotunda. Brown died last week at the age of 88. The public visitation for the former governor will go from 3 until 7 p.m. tomorrow at the state capitol. His funeral is set for Wednesday afternoon, also at the Capitol. The Transportation Security Administration says air travel volume hit a pandemic-era record yesterday. The agency said on Twitter it screened more than 2.5 million people at U.S. airports that day. That beats the record of 2.49 million set on July 1st after the pandemic battered the air travel industry. The TSA says... Mm -hmm. Uh, that nearly matched the record the day before Thanksgiving, screening 2.46 million people. Oil prices in the U.S. Has, have hit a low not seen in nearly a year. Futures for West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil, which is the North American benchmark, fell just more than 3% on Monday. Meanwhile, futures for the global benchmark Brent Crude had a similar drop sending oil prices down to $81 a barrel. That's the lowest it's been since January. Analysts say fears about COVID-19 restrictions and lockdown protests in China have caused a dent in demand, leading to lower gas prices here in the U.S. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, the White House held its official unveiling of this year's holiday decorations. And heavy rain and gusty winds are likely with our next weather system. All those details coming up.